Factorio is that kind of game which seems so easy, until we realize it's because we already have few thousand hours in it. Since I rejected my social life and free time many years ago, because of Factorio, I am a perfect guy to tell you more things I wish I knew before playing Factorio. Also, to run subtitles, you need them. Desert may look like a perfect location to start your base, because you can find tons of huge rocks that will provide you with coal and stone, which are so important at the beginning for furnaces and smelting. But don't get tricked by the war generator, since he's doing a little bit of trolling. Desert is actually a very hard biome to start in, especially for beginners. As soon as your factory starts growing, you'll experience more and more friendly visits from native city. Um, no, 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 no friendly, no friendly! <coughs> visits will be caused by a rapid spread of harmless fumes produced in your factory. Trees work like a big sponge for pollution, so the more trees you have, the less visits from neighbors you will get. Trains are the best way to transfer large quantity of goods over long distances. To speed up a whole transport process, it's good to make a proper station. No, 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 no like this one. Inserters that output directly on belts are very inefficient and extend load unload time. This is why you should build a special transshipment warehouse. Thanks to those additional chests, you can quickly unload your train and let it go for our next delivery. Also, as soon as soon as you research stack inserters, you should use them in your train stations, because they will increase unloading or loading speed up to 4 times. It's very hard to push big bases in the early game, even with inventory full of sardines which can heal you in a fight. So moment when I learned this trick to use turrets as an offensive weapon was a game changer for me. Just look at this comparison. On the left I'm using only submachine and sardines, yeah, uh, not good. And on the right I'm using only gun turrets. Ok, let's speed up to see the final result. What can I say, data clearly shows that sardines can fix your medical bills and turrets can debug your nearby terrain. This one is more a mid game trick after you spend some time with this game and when your factory becomes so huge that it's hard to see. You can use a map view to manage your factory without moving at all. You can place blueprints, single buildings, deconstruct anything and change recipes on your assemblers. You just need to place few radars because without them you have a very pixelated view which makes everything harder. Also, when you're placing those radars, look at your minimap because this blue square shows what is the range of your radar. Before I learned this trick, I was basically playing a walking simulator from one bottleneck to another. Don't do it. All patches in Factorio don't stand for too long and they are deployed even quicker when your base progresses. To get more resources out of one or patch, you need to research a mining bonus, which will increase productivity of your miners by a few percent. However, it's not much. This is why it's way better to explore world and find richer ores. Factorio world generator works in the way that every ore patch further and further away from respawn will be bigger, but not in form of size, it's bigger in form of richness, and this metric really matters. Here's a very big ore patch next to respawn, which has a suspicious little amount of iron. On the other hand, there is a way smaller outpost, but with way more materials to mine. By moving far away from a starting base, you can simply build less mining outposts, because they will last longer. Steam power is not the best solution, because you need to constantly resupply your boilers with nuclear fuel or coal. It would be way easier to just pay one price and get power forever. What can I say, it's totally possible, I myself love solars, even so it takes tons of space to build them, because I pay once and that's all. However solars alone aren't very helpful, because when the sun goes to sleep, not like you when you play Factorio, solars doesn't work, you have to make a combination of accumulators and solar panels. I had a problem of calculating how many accumulators should I build to sustain my factory during night? And the answer is simple. For every 25 solars, you need to build 21 accumulators. So it's good to just make one blueprint with those amount of power making buildings and place it whenever you're running low on power. Trains are basically the best thing in Factorio and you should start using them as soon as you can. I know that signals look overwhelming for beginners, especially when you want to build a nice looking and actually working intersection. So, to explain signals better, I brought you a great teacher. Hello class, it's me, Frogman. Today we're going to learn about trains. Now, does anyone know what happens when you don't use rail signals in your train network? Kevin? Oh, right. Well... The trains explode. To stop them from exploding, we need rail signals. Rail signals separate tracks into blocks. If a train is in a block, the other trains have to wait. When the first train leaves, the other can take its spot. 
Oh shit, they found me. Um, I gotta go. Uh, seems like incident from 2007 is still chasing him, uh, so race, uh, race. Race signals are not only signals in factory, there are also chain signals which are more complicated. Yay! Because they look into multiple blocks after them. For example, there are two blocks and both are occupied. When you use a normal rail signal, your train might get stuck in this middle block. But with chain signal, train can choose first row that will be available. I'm recommending you to play around with those signals in editor mode or inside the game tutorial. Especially you can Fact Torio has tons of shortcuts, but I would like to draw your attention at two the most important shortcuts. I literally cannot imagine to play Factorio without the Q button. It's just so much easier to build anything using just one button. You just need to put your mouse over a building and press Q to get this building in your hand. Simple and awesome. Another awesome button is Z. Thanks to this shortcut you can easily put coal into furnaces at the very beginning of your game. Fuel your hard bus tank or the most important thing is dispensing bullets to are freshly placed threads inside houses of people who aren't subscribed to Truppen. <clears throat> you still have a chance. Uh, there are more shortcuts, but you will eventually learn them by just playing. Splitting the uranium into smaller atoms is a great way to obtain electricity. You can literally produce enough energy to fullify your 5 years plan in only 4 microseconds. Nuclear power is another thing that looks very over... over... Very hard for beginners, but it's actually very simple, unlike English. You just need to prepare a special station for sulfuric acid drain, which will be used in your mining outpost. Next, transported ore need to be processed in a certifuge and separate to uranium 235 and 238. When you obtain 40 pieces of uranium 238, you can start the Kovarex process which will produce you more of this awesome green rock. Turn this into a fuel in a normal assembler and put it into your reactors. You can start very simple with only one reactor, but it would be good to expand it more because they're gonna hit each other and produce more power for your factory. I think it's worth to mention that reactors don't explode. I mean, as long as you're not gonna play with rockets around. Gun turrets are the best weapon to defend your factory, until you realize that your turrets don't deal any damage anymore. It's because biters evolve into more tanky version and to keep up with their armor you have to constantly upgrade your bullets in your labs and produce better and better ammunition. Luckily there are other weapons which can be used to talk with your neighbors. Laser turrets are the easiest to set up, but they don't deal too much damage. This is why I'm recommending you to use flamethrowers, just supply them with few gallons of oil and your base will be impregnable. There are other ways to defend your base, but let's say that I'm not recommending them. I was very reluctant to modules when I was starting out. <laughs> However, they are an awesome solution to all your bottlenecks. If something works too slow and there is enough materials on the belts, just put some speed modules inside your assemblers and everything will be fixed. If something is too fast, take advantage of productivity modules which will slow down the production and save some resources in the process. Beginners are often overwhelmed by all the recipes and ratios in Factorio, so easy solution like modules and beacons to fix it is great. In addition to that, you can put modules almost everywhere to your assemblers, miners, refinery or just make the ultimate democracy harvester. This is my base back in the days. Like you can see, it's very well organized and very easy to expand without any modification. I know that you might disagree if you for example have eyes. This is literally the worst thing to deal with when you want to expand your factory. It's basically impossible to add new belts or use existing ones without rebuilding the whole thing. Sometimes it's just easier to nuke everything and start over. Main bus design will totally change how you view this game. Because after you learn it, your base will always look very very similar to each other. Primary idea of this design is to build a main lane with all commonly used resources. This way you can easily borrow supplies from it and build all machines perpetual to the main lane. Some people love this design, some people hate it, but it's up to you to decide what you like. I heard multiple times from new players that they don't want to fit their turrets with ammo belt and inserters because they don't have enough bullets to fill all the turrets with 200 ammo. 
So I will tell you something, one turret will only take around 10 magazines, so you don't need to worry about it. You can also use your turrets as a supply point for another line of turrets. My friend from Texas called this design an American Rail Race. So to build it, just place one inserter between turrets and you double your damage output. This trick of changing your building is especially useful with science labs, because they are kind of hard to supply with 7 different science packs. Thanks to chain trick, you can supply one lab with science packs and and all other labs will get bottles with inserters when needed. I know it tends to build a very long line of labs or to make a nice looking reverse pyramid, but at some point your inserters will be not fast enough, so keep that in mind. Huge shops which allow you to pick up some food and bullets at the same time are very convenient in real life. They are also very convenient in Factorio. After you build your first mall, you will ask yourself how have you been playing this game without it. Centralized area with assemblers, crafting all necessary items is something that you need right now. Crafting everything in hand might be easy solution, but you'll regret it as soon as you need to craft 200 inserters or assemblers. Here is a very simple mall which will provide you with the most necessary materials like belts, assemblers and inserters. You can of course expand this like you want or build it completely different. Everything is up to you. Here is my favorite example of a quite expanded mall. However, I recommend sticking to a simple version. Of course, huge thanks to my lovely patrons to support my work. And there is the best factory tutorial you you'll ever see. Why I shouted this? I have no clue how it works. Will this explode when I tell- <laughs>